Hey, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training, and in this video, we're going to be covering five things that make you stand out negatively on the field. You want to be sure that you avoid these five things so that you can really maximize all of your opportunities that are going to come your way in your baseball career. You don't want to, you know, throw away potentially making a team or potentially playing at the next level because you made the mistake of doing one of the five things we're going to be talking about in today's video. So I really think you're going to enjoy this one. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first thing is throwing your equipment. Good or bad, act like you've been there before. You know, when you fail on the field, it's not your equipment's fault, it's your fault. It's not your helmet's fault that you struck out, so quit throwing your helmet. It's not your glove's fault when you make an error in the field, so quit, you know, throwing your glove on the ground or anything like that. I'll tell you a story. I had a teammate one time, crazy. It was the first game of the season, and it was his first play. It was, in fact, one of the first plays of the game in the very first inning. He was playing third base, a ground ball hit his way, he fielded it cleanly and he threw it not only over the first baseman, he threw it over the fence on the first base side. So he absolutely airmailed the throw. He made an air, right? And it was the very first ball that was hit his way throughout the entire season. So he made a mistake, he made an air, he let the ball go. So what? Who cares? Move on to the next pitch. Is that's the mentality he should have had. But instead, you know, he, he, he literally got down on one knee and he punched the ground and it turns out that he broke his hand. He obviously couldn't throw, he couldn't hit. His season was done because of that one silly mistake. So I'm not telling you to play without passion. I'm not telling you, can, you that you can never get frustrated with yourself because, uh, you know, emotions are part of this game and you should, you know, use your emotions to your advantage, right? But what I am telling you to do is do not, you know, hurt yourself permanently uh, because of short-term feelings, right? That's the biggest mistake that you can make. So, you know, don't humiliate yourself on the field. Don't make yourself look bad. Don't break things on the field. It's okay if you go in the dugout and you're a little bit frustrated at yourself. Maybe sometimes you throw your batting gloves in your helmet because you're, you know, you're upset. You want to perform at a higher level on the field. But again, don't ruin something permanently based on a short-term feeling. Don't injure yourself, don't break things, and don't throw your equipment bottom line. Uh, act like you've been there before when you have success on the field and when you fail on the field. Short memory, right? Act like you've been there before. The second thing that's gonna make you stand out in a negative way is jogging to first base on a ground ball or a pop-up, okay? Now look, I get it. As a hitter, it's one of the most frustrating feelings ever when you get a crushable pitch that's over the white of the plate and instead of doing damage with it, instead of crushing it into the gaps or you know, maybe it was a, a belt-high fastball right over the middle of the plate or a hanging curveball that you could have taken yard, instead of doing that, it's the most frustrating feeling when you roll over, hit a ground ball to shortstop or when you hit a little weak little flare pop-up to the infield, right? But no matter what happens on the field, hard 90s. You have got to run hard all the way through first base, no matter what happens, no matter how much of a for sure out that you think it is, because the reality is, you know, you never know. Number one, you never know what can happen, especially if you're playing, you know, on a sunny day and maybe the sun gets in, you know, the shortstop's eyes and he drops it. You never know. Or maybe you're playing a night game and, you know, he looks up into the lights and he's kind of blinded by them a little bit and he drops it. You never know what can happen on a ground ball. It might get under his glove, might take a bad hop. You never know what can happen. So that's one reason. And then the second reason is just you never want to jog to first base. You always want to have hard 90s because that's the way baseball is supposed to be played, right? You want to, you know, show respect to the game and um, you want to play the game the right way okay so don't jog to first base even if you think oh man that sucks I hit a ground ball that's a for sure out or I hit a little weak flare up pop up and I'm gonna be out no matter what happens hard 90s all day Number three is arguing with umpires now there's a time and a place for obviously if you think a pitch is outside it's fine for you to turn around and maybe ask the umpire have a conversation with him about hey is that is that too close for me to take, obviously, or what do we think in there? You know, it's, it's fine for you to have a conversation with the umpire, but you never want to argue with him and you never want to show him up on the field. So don't be drawing lines in the batter's box or screaming at the umpire or anything like that. It's a great way to get kicked out of the game. It's a great way to stand out negatively on the field. And, you know, if any scouts watching you play or any coaches watching you play, a lot of them are going to say, you know, I don't want anything to do with that particular player. So don't argue with umpires. And I get it sometimes, you know, it's frustrating, especially when the the strike zone seems to just continue to be expanding or if it's super inconsistent I understand that that's frustrating right but you have to understand that umpires are humans and humans make mistakes that's number one and number two you know if let's take the strike zone for example because that's something that a lot of players like to argue about is the strike zone right well let's say that the umpire rings you up so you strike out looking 
you know, if he called that pitch a strike, except for the outlying, you know, crazy situations, if he thinks that that pitch is a strike, it's probably too close for you to take. So instead of arguing, make an adjustment. Make an adjustment and say, hey, with two strikes, you know, his zone's big today, especially after your first at bat, you shouldn't make that same mistake again in your second and third and fourth at bat. You should fail forward and learn from your mistakes and say, hey, it is what it is. So what? Who cares? I'm going to move forward. His zone's big today, so if I can touch it with my bat with two strikes, I've got to foul it off, live to see another pitch, or I've got to put the ball in play. I have to expand the zone. I'm not going to leave my fate up to the umpire. So don't argue with him. Make an adjustment. All right, number four is disagreeing with coach. Coaches. And specifically, I'm talking about you know shaking your head when they give you the bunt sign or something like that and refusing to bunt. That's not what you should do. In fact, that's one of the things that I think will make you stand out in the most negative way on the field. And you've got to understand that baseball is a team sport, right? Yes, it's a collection of individual performances that make up the team, but baseball is not an individual sport. It's a team sport, which means sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice yourself for the betterment of the team, meaning sometimes you're going to have to lay down a bunt. Sometimes you're gonna have to do a hit and run. Sometimes you're gonna have to sacrifice yourself, hit a sack fly, and drive in that run, right? Baseball is a team sport, and you always have to remember that. So what I'm telling you to do is when your coach gives you the bunt sign, you know, don't nod your head, because obviously that'll give away that there's, there's a sign on, but you know, inside your head, you need to just be agreeing and nodding your head and do the job, execute, get the bunt down, and do the job. Now, that being said, if there's a disagreement, let's say, you know, a lot of players, um, you know, they think that they should be playing more, get more play playing time than they're currently getting. I'm not telling you to not stick up for yourself. So if there's something that you disagree with your coach on that needs to be discussed, stick up for yourself, but do it privately. There's no need to do that publicly. There's no need to disagree with him in the middle of the game or bring up playing time in the middle of the game or anything like that. Schedule time for you to talk to your coach, not your parents, you to talk to your coach about playing time or whatever other issues you have or disagreements, right? And that's totally fine to do. Stick up for yourself. But in a real game, understand it's a team sport. Your coach wants what's best for the team and when he tells you to do something, you know, do it. Execute and help your team win. And last but certainly not least, number five is not doing the little things. That's definitely going to make you stand out in a negative way on the field. And this is going to make you stand out for sure to, you know, coaches and scouts and people that know what's going on in the game of baseball. Maybe not so much to just your everyday, you know, fan who who just shows up and, you know, watches the game and doesn't really know uh, the mental side behind, you know, every single aspect of the game of baseball, right? But to any coach or a scout that's watching you play, if you don't do the little things, it's a great way to stand out negatively. What I'm talking about with the little things is, you know, pitchers, are you backing up bases? So, you know, you just got a double ripped off of you and you're frustrated, but are you, you know, are you just kind of sitting there sulking on the mound when that happens? Or are you backing up a base? Are you getting somewhere and backing someplace up, right? Pitchers, again, you know, a ground ball hit to the right side of the infield, are you getting over there, right? Because the first baseman is going to be, you know, first baseman and second baseman are going to be going to make that play and nobody's covering first base. So you need to cover you need to get over there and cover first base, right? So are you doing that or are you going to look silly after that play, you know, doesn't work out and that base runner is uh, safe at first because nobody covered the bag, right? So are you doing that? Outfielders, are you backing up bases? You know, are you keeping your throws down low enough to where infielders can either cut them off or redirect them somewhere else? Catchers, you know, are, are you guys, you know, on a, on a routine ground ball to the shortstop or the third baseman, are you guys busting it down the line and backing up first base? Infielders, do you know what you're doing no matter where the baseball is put into play? If it's hit at you, do you know what you're doing? If it's hit at the second baseman, do you know what you're doing? If it's hit somewhere in the outfield, do you know where you're going? These are all little things, and we can add even more little things to, you know, this, this exhaustive list, right? But the biggest thing is, you know the little things that I'm talking about, the little intricacies of the game. Always make sure you're doing those things. Always make sure you're doing the fundamentals because the biggest difference between amateur players and the players that do it at the highest level, the professional players, the professionals, they're very, very talented, but they never screw up the basics. They never don't do the fundamentals or very rarely, okay? So if you want to stand out in a positive way on the field, just make sure you're always doing those little things. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful for you. If it was, please hit that thumbs up button. Hit the like button, I'd really appreciate it. Go ahead and smash it right now and subscribe to the channel that way you never miss any of our upcoming videos. And last thing, hitters, I put together a free resource for you that's gonna help you take your hitting to the next level. It's called the Contact Point Checklist. 
and it's 100% free. You can click on the link down below in the description and go download that right now. But what I've done is I've freeze framed the swing at the point of contact and I've highlighted a few key areas that you need to focus on. You need to make sure you're doing these things at the point of contact, otherwise you're leaving bat speed and you're leaving power on the table. So go download that right now. I know it's gonna help you, it's 100% free. Just click on the link down below. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.